Today we're going to start with one of my most basic art lessons, which is doing a color gradient. Um, and so you're going to see the value scale here. What I've done, I've just used a straight edge and I've drawn three different columns, rectangular areas, and I've divided them into five spots. One, two, three, four, five. So we are going to start with our lightest color here and we're going to work our way into a deeper shade of the same color. The way you're going to do this is you're just going to add water to the different colors you choose. I'm using a flat brush and I'm going to just start with a very pale shade of purple here. And this is going to be the lightest shade that I can achieve. You want to be careful to go ahead and use watercolor paper so it doesn't scratch through to the other side. I will add the next shade up. So this time I have added a little more pigment into the top of my watercolor palette where I'm mixing these colors. And you can see this is the same color purple, but it's just a slight shade darker. Okay, next we're going to go over here and you can see I'm using the same shade as the previous one and I'm just going to get a little bit more and add it on top of this. This is going to be a great tool once you've completed this value scale. This is a great tool to keep with you in your art supplies and everything because you'll remember if you're creating some flowers or some leaves or whatever you're working on that you can use the same color and create several different shades within the um, within your piece and when you do that it's nice because it adds a whole level of almost a 3d effect it gives it just gives it such a better effect it makes your picture not so flat the more detail you can add the better now we are adding more pigment and less water and so as we get deeper here this is the deepest shade. Now you could certainly create more boxes and see if you could even come up with several shades in between each of these two values. But just for our basic tool here and for beginner watercolor, I think it's just important to practice going from very light, a little darker, 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 and just playing with the water. Now you can see I'm not going all the way to the edge of these perfect squares that I used a straight edge to invent and that's because when they touch they will bleed so I wanted a little difference there. There we go. All right a little more pigment a little less water into spot number four here and I just fill that in and then the last one and if you want to get the water off your brush even you can go over here and dab it on a paper towel. I always keep a handy paper towel nearby to either blot out mistakes or to stop runs or sometimes even to give texture to my drawing or to just um, get a little bit of the water off the brush. Paper towels can be used for so many things in watercolor so it's important to always have one or two close at hand. Well, my brush is almost completely covered in pigment and barely any water, just enough water to smoothly apply the color and you can see that this shade is a bit darker than the one before. Now you can see there's a little bit of a pile of water there, so I'll just go ahead and show you if you wanted to use your paper towel to blot it, you would find a clean edge and just gently press into that and it brings it up. You can also see how that left a little bit of a texture there. And I'm not in the mood for texture right now because this is just a basic picture, so I'm just going to smooth that out. In the most pure form of watercolor, you don't use any white. So your light, light, light red is actually what's pink. All right, next shade, here we go. Just a little more pigment mixed into the water. Just gradually working in. A little bit more. And you can do this with all the colors. A little more pigment in this one so that it differentiates from this other red. Contrast is a big thing in watercolor and so the more you can put different contrasting colors into your picture which means they don't match then the more dramatic your painting is going to look. 
and here we have this deep red that's barely got water on it. And so you can see that's got some contrast there, especially with the first shade. So the further apart your shades are on the value scale, the more contrast you'll have. Now another fun way to work on the value scale is creating something circular. Um, we could do orbs, balloons, anything circular. So I'll just do a couple of circles here, two different sizes, how about that? Now what we're gonna do, you wanna pick a light source and that will help you figure out the shading. So we'll go ahead and pick a light source over here on the right side and I'm just gonna draw a little sunshine to remind me that there's a light source here. Sometimes on an actual painting you can draw um, just a tiny reminder over here that there's a light coming so that all your shading goes this way. Um, and then just make sure you can erase it at the end because you don't want to leave a sunshine on your fabulous painting. All right, so we'll just go ahead and pick another color. I'm going to leave a little highlight at the top of my first orb and it's going to be facing the sun. It's not going to be the area that's closest to the sun. So I'll just move it right here. This will help with the illusion that this is a round orb. And then I got my lightest blue facing the sun here. Okay. I'm also painting a little bit in a circular motion, which is unlike these examples up here. And that is to help with the roundness. Now I am going to the next shade of blue here, and that's going to run a little bit. That's okay. I can either fix it later or leave it. Anytime it's all wet and it touches, it's just going to run over there. Watercolor is a lot about playing with it and figuring out how to make it work for you. I'm going to take my little towel here and blot gently around the white spot because I would rather that stay a little lighter. And then I can come back and smooth that out. And that's how watercolor is. You can just play around with it and you're going to figure out what works for you. If you like to paint more wet on wet or if you're comfortable doing more dry painting, which can be a little more accurate and it doesn't run as much. We're gonna get really dark back here on the, the end of it here, on the back side, furthest from the light source. And actually, there's a lighter spot right on the edge where it's probably picking up a little light from the ground or whatever's behind it. So I'm going to go ahead and use another paper towel that I just had nearby and just edge that out a little bit here, dry it off. Okay, I'm going to go back in and use a very dark, let me get some of that water off here so it will be extra, extra condensed and very dark here right here on the edge, right furthest, almost furthest from the sun, other than the catch light. There. And you can see how I've kept my stroke circular in tune with the shape of this orb. So these are pretty. You can just um, play with making different ones or you can shape them into balloons or whatever you want, and just try different things with them. Try putting water back on. If you wait till it dries, there's a fun technique called wet on dry, and you can leave a little glop of water and see how that works out. But right now we're just gonna smooth it out to this beautiful orb here. And we're going to leave that little catch light there. And it's um, a pretty good technique to leave white spaces here and there throughout your paintings, um, depending what you're working on. But it just kind of adds another dimension to it. This time, I'm going to work a little bit backwards. So we are going to start with the darkest area. Here near the bottom. I'll go ahead and put that catch light in. So different artists work in different ways. Uh, most of us like to work light to dark because that helps you erase mistakes. So if you start with your lightest tones in the whole picture that you're going after, 
and then work your way into dark painting, then if you make a mistake, you can paint over it with your darker paints. However, some artists like to try jumping right into the darks, and that works for them. It can be fun just trying the different ways. It might just be a little less forgiving, but it might look more dramatic in the end, depending what you're working on. Now here I'm just putting almost plain water down, and I'm going to let the color run right into it. I'm going to leave a little space for my catch light right here. A little white space, which is a little bit hard to do sometimes, which is why some artists use mask. You can use masking tape, or you can use masking fluid, and that can help you leave the specific white spot that you're looking to leave. And sometimes in watercolor you can use gouache or you can use acrylic, do a little bit of mixed media, and that would help with some white sprinkles or whatever you needed to, to go back in and put. Watercolor in the purest form is just plain watercolor and no white involved, and you have to figure out how to leave those tricky white spaces. So here we are, darkening, darkening, what's furthest? So these, these are good examples to keep as your tools. I would leave the sun here, and that way when you are using this as a tool, you'll remind yourself, oh yeah, I'm painting this scene, I need to pick my light source, or whatever you're painting, there's always a light source. And it's come, you want it to come from, usually from the left or the, from the, left or the right, usually not straight on, not from the bottom, but um, artistically you could pick anywhere. Just remember to face your light colors toward the light source. There. I hope you've enjoyed this. Please like and subscribe and look forward to viewing more videos from Studio 77.